students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Hungary. I hope everybody is having a great week so far, being productive, staying positive, and finding the happy side of life. Hi, Abhishek. Hi, Carolina. Hi, Jainil. Nice to see many of our members in the class. Uh, Pinti, Ronak, Nick Hill, good to see many of our regular students as well. I'm doing fine, thank you for asking. Uh, and um, today uh, we are focusing on IELTS speaking part one. Uh, speaking part one of the speaking section and focusing on mastery for a band nine. I have a full week of IELTS classes coming up for you, so we will have classes tomorrow, Friday, and on Saturday. Of course, as usual, uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic English help and academic IELTS help. Please visit us there for general IELTS. Check us out at g ieltshelp.com on both of our websites we have lots and lots of materials to help you improve uh, strategies to get those higher band scores and really get better at your communication in English uh, in a short time our websites look like this this is our academic website here with the blue background uh, you can click that big red button to join the premium package you can try it for free by clicking the green button as well. Uh, once you access your account, your My Student account, you can maybe see that up here, um, then uh, you can uh, do some speaking practice for free in there. Okay. All right. Uh, the General Alex website looks like this it's got the green background, and you can click that big red button to join there. Let me see if I can. Um, make this a little bit sharper for you. Nope, that's definitely not it. Let me try that one more time. Okay, I think that's as sharp as we're going to get. Hopefully that's clear for you. All right. Um, okay. If anybody has questions, uh, you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will uh, gladly uh, answer for you in due time, usually in less than 24 hours. And uh, if you'd like to get our uh, exam books for the IELTS, uh, you can go to Amazon, search for A Helps Academic Outs or G Helps General Outs, and you'll find a couple of books there. Okay. Um, and again, speaking today and then tomorrow, task two for members, listening parts one and two for everyone, and then more writing, listening, and speaking during the week. All right. So, um, Everyone, let's get into some speaking practice here real quick. Uh, before we get, we get going with the speaking questions, um, just some review for our students who are regularly watching, okay? Um, so here's a question. Uh, what should you do before your speaking exam? What are some important points uh, to keep in mind uh, before your speaking exam, let's see, and maybe some students can give us some new information that they uh, found useful from their exams or from uh, other websites or other videos. So what should you do before? Maksud says practice, yeah, uh, practice lots. Lots, and of course, get feedback on your practice, okay? That means uh, learn your mistakes. Okay. Um, Morris says, be calm, don't panic, practice with other people. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so be calm. 
Um, especially with the mask on, we just released a video showing some strategies on what to pay attention to when you're wearing a face mask in many, many parts of the world, maybe everywhere in the world right now, you have to wear a face mask during your actual speaking interview. So if you're nervous, it's much easier to panic because the mask blocks your breathing and, um, we can get a panic attack when we can't breathe. So Carolina says, yeah, that was a great video. Thanks, Carolina. Um, so be extra calm. Okay. So be calm, relax, focus yourself. Okay. So don't let your mind race. Okay. Okay. Just focus on the road ahead. Step by step, step by step. Okay. All right. Um, oh, uh, social distancing is not enough. You're in a closed room with the examiner. So even if you're uh, further away from the examiner, still a mask, right? If somebody sneezes suddenly or coughs suddenly, a sneeze will fly seven meters and you're not that far from the examiner, right? Okay. A um, couple things you should do too is uh, record your speaking on your phone and listen to it. Do this regularly. Okay. Uh, make a list of important strategies to remember before your exam, like uh, reflect the grammar of questions. Okay. So that's your mental checklist, okay? Make sure you have a list of important key strategies to uh, keep in mind when you walk into your speaking exam, all right? Uh, Maksud says, do lots of paraphrasing. That's right, Maksud, do lots of paraphrasing practice. Yeah, it's one of the best ways to learn and one of the best ways to get high scores. All right, so those are some of the do's for sure. There's a lot of do's. Uh, these are some of the important ones to pay attention to before your exam. Um, what should you not do or say uh, during your speaking exam? Let's uh, see what kind of answers you come up with for this one. Eugen, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for the emojis. I love the panda. Okay. Um, Shiva Kumar, hand gestures are absolutely good during the speaking. Hand gestures emphasize and enunciate our language. Um, and um, especially with the mask on these days, it's very useful to use hand gestures. Okay. Uh, Michael, you can use common vocabulary. Okay. Aman Jad says, avoid saying you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when students use you, their quality of speech goes down. Yeah, that's very true. So when students start to say, you do this, you do that, um, then uh, the quality of speech goes down. Abhishek says, don't use words like stuff, things, something. Yeah. Do not use words like stuff, things, something. Uh, instead, always find a better noun or word. Yeah, absolutely. Words like stuff and thing have very little uh, utility. Oftentimes, they don't have any usefulness. So you want to avoid those kinds of words. Okay, Flower Sun says, give accurate answers. That's the do's. Uh, I saw another one. One of the students before said, uh, don't use general language. And that's very true. I can't remember who said that, but uh, that's absolutely true. Okay, and we had a new member join as well. Welcome, Elise. Uh, thank you for joining. Send me an email and I'll hook you up with those exclusive videos, okay? All right, so uh, do not use general language ideas uh, only. You can start general, so you can start with a general idea, but it's very important to go into specific details. It is important to sound original and go into details, okay? 
All right, and another one, you might be surprised to hear me say this, but another one that you should avoid is uh, idiomatic phrases, or how should I say this, idiomatic sentences, okay? So avoid using complex idioms, especially uh, sentences, okay? Uh, these can be very confusing, like, uh, for example, do not throw bricks when you live in a glass house, okay? So don't use this kind of complex idiomatic language. Uh, you can use idioms, you can use phrasal verbs, you can use idiomatic phrases, but don't use really complex idioms, especially don't translate idioms from your language. Uh, those can be really confusing. So avoid doing that, okay? Abhishek says, don't start answers with yes or no. Ah, you might uh, do that at some point. Um, yes, I do believe that. You can start a sentence in this way, okay? Uh, now, why says try to avoid translating in your mind absolutely for those higher band scores, okay? Uh, and another really important one, I don't know if anybody said this, I think everybody knows it, but uh, I didn't see it. I'm sure somebody probably mentioned it is do not go off topic from the question, okay? That's one of the worst uh, possible um actions you can take is uh, go off topic okay uh, if you have a question about what you like to do on the weekend and you start talking about your favorite football team um, if you don't connect that to your weekend how you like watching them on tv then uh, that will get a horrible score okay because it means you probably didn't understand the question you have no idea what you're talking about so that's a big big problem Okay, so don't go off topic. All right. So those are some important points. Okay. Uh, Kawal says, try not to use for example. Absolutely. Yeah. Try not to use for example. Just give the example. Okay. All right. Mohammed Azat, you can always ask for a paraphrase or a repeat of the question, or you can try to paraphrase, sorry, the question or ask to uh, repeat the question if you don't know what it is. If you really don't know what it is, Muhammad, just ask for the next question instead of talking about something silly and off topic, okay? Uh, Naughty boy, yeah, if you have a question, you can ask the examiner, but remember, it's an English proficiency exam, so there's a very good chance that they can't give you an answer or an explanation, okay? All right, so let's get into this a little bit. Let's do some practice. Let's start with the standard introductions. This is speaking, so practice speaking, everyone. So speak and uh, repeat, okay? Whatever you hear me say, copy it and enunciate it. Enunciation is very, very important, all right? Okay, so the first question that you will most likely be asked as you enter the exam room is may I see your identification, please? They need to check if you are who you say you are, so uh, especially with the mask on. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, Amanjad says, certainly here's my passport that I used to register for this exam. Please have a look, it's good. Uh, Carolina says, yes, here's my ID that I used to register for this exam. Please have a look, good. OS, my pleasure. This is my ID card. I used it to register uh, here. Uh, please take a look. Good. Um, Shah Baz says, if we skip the question in the exam, won't it impact our score? Uh, Shah Baz, yes, it will. Um, so you will lose points if you keep skipping questions. However, you will lose more points if you give a really strange off-topic answer and you lose time from questions that you might be able to answer, okay? So Shakbaz is asking a really important question here, and I'll return to it. Um, may I see your identification, please? Yes, of course. Here is my ID card that I used uh, 
for registration a couple of weeks ago. Uh, please have a look. Okay, so that is one of many ways that you can answer this question. Right away, show fluency, show that you can speak in full sentences. This is not a friendly uh, chit chat with your neighbor. Uh, you're looking to show your maximum ability in English communication, okay? So, yes, of course, here's my ID card that I used for registration a couple of weeks ago. Please have a look, okay? Always uh, try to follow my pace so you can build your fluency. Um, yeah, there was a good question by... Uh, uh, Shach Boz, uh, Shach Boz says, if I skip questions, won't I lose uh, points? Yes, you will, but not as much as if you go off topic, okay? So keep this in mind, okay? If you skip questions, try not to skip more than one. If you skip questions, you will lose marks, but not as many as if you give a completely off topic answer. The reason is that when you skip the question, uh, you save some time to get another question that hopefully uh, you can answer well and show your level. Okay, uh, but if you give a uh, especially a long off-topic answer, you're losing valuable seconds, okay? So you have to be very careful with that. I'm sure that makes sense for everybody now, right? Time, it's a timed exam, so time is valuable. You have to think about both your time and your content in the IELTS, okay? All right, um, so here we go. Uh, the next question is, what is your full name, okay? They're going to hold your ID. They're going to look at you. Even with the mask on, they're going to try to look at your eyes, color of your eyes. They'll probably check the color of your eyes in your uh, document. Uh, so if you're wearing contacts that change your eye color, that might not be a good idea. Uh, or you might want to say, <laughs> you'll notice my eyes are a different color because I'm wearing contacts. Um, okay. Hassan says, my full name is Hassan Sadek, and my family name is Jafar. Please call me Hassan. I feel more comfortable uh, with this than Sadek, I'm guessing. Um, finish that idea, Hassan. Uh, Ronak says, my full name is Ronak Sangavi. As you can also see in my passport, please call me uh, by my first name. By my first name instead of with my first name, okay? Sandy Santui says, my name is Sandy and my family name is Santui. Uh, please just call me Sandy for short. Uh, Sandy, it sounds like Sandy is Sandy, so it's not short, right? Um, so Sandy, a little correction here. Um, my first name is Sandy and my family name is Santui. Uh, please just call me Sandy. Okay. You don't want this first answer to sound weird. Uh, because that's not a good way to start. Okay, Shravan says, my full name is Shravan Kumar Paul. Uh, my family name is Paul. Please just call me Shravan. Yeah, again, it's just small little nuances in native natural English, right? We wouldn't say, and family name is Paul. We would just say, my family name is Paul because you've given it. So it's not a plus one. It's just a descriptive. Okay, Shravan. So my full name is Shravan Kumar Paul. My family name is Paul. Please just call me by my given name, Shravan. All right. So my full name is Thomas Frederick Jefferson. Kind of like the president, right? <laughs> Please uh, call me Tom for short. Okay, so that would be uh, one way to do it. Uh, here, repeat after me. So what is your full name? My full name is Thomas Frederick Jefferson. Please call me Tom for short. You want to be really fluent with these introductory questions because you shouldn't be thinking here about the language and these should be on the tip of your tongue, okay? All right, the examiner then will uh, continue and say, 
Okay, Tom, here's your identification back. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. I will record it for marking purposes. And um, for part one, I will ask you a couple more questions to get to know you better, some questions on a general topic. What do you do for fun? So, or what do you like to do for fun? That's going to be a very common question that you could easily hear in part one. These are the kinds of questions that most students would learn in their first one or two years of learning English. Okay, so here you want to definitely get into paraphrasing. Uh, you want to definitely be expressive, clear. Okay. Lata Kunte says, well, I love to hang out with my best friend Kate and have fun. We usually play badminton for about an hour and then uh, show each other some skills and techniques. Um, and uh, this helps us to relax and enjoy each other's company. Lata, careful. You're kind of getting into some awkward language there near the end. Uh, Carolina says, for entertainment, I like to socialize and meet my friends. Last night, I had a great conversation with my friend Ali through Skype. Very good, Carolina. That works. Uh, Sammy says, for fun, I either play music because I'm a drummer and a guitarist, or I listen to music because I love music. Uh, in fact, I most often uh, go to a concert whenever I can, at least once a week. Uh, Sammy, good. You can say a little bit more there, I think, to make it even more natural, more uh, fluent. Mridula says, I usually enjoy time with my family, um, sharing conversations with them and finding out about their day. Uh, just yesterday, I learned that my uh, younger brother got an award for uh, an outstanding speech in his class. Okay, Mridula, add a nice, smooth, flowing, natural example into your response so it doesn't just sound like a general statement that we could read out of any English textbook, okay? Um, what you want to really pay attention to students is um, you must not sound like you are uh, getting answers from an English uh, textbook or some template from an online video, okay? That's why I don't like teaching templates. So, of course, there are some phrases that are useful, but I'd rather you be yourself, okay? That's how you're going to get those uh, high band scores. Oh, it says, usually I like to play video games with my friends online, and on the weekend, I go to the theater to watch my favorite show. Yeah, Ois, and that's good too. Again, playing video games and going to the theater, it sounds like something I can read in a, an English textbook. And even if it's true, it's kind of like, okay, we'll give some details, right? Like, what's your favorite video game? So um, I love first-person shooter games like Call of Duty, playing that with my friends and chatting with them uh, online, especially these days during the lockdown. It's a great way to uh, keep myself distanced from other people while still enjoying their company. Uh, just last weekend, I went to the theater and watched Mulan. Okay, so that would be much more you. That would get a much higher band score. All right. Again, students, make sure you're repeating as soon as you hear these. Uh, even if you don't say exactly what I said, but just repeating the idea so you can replace the name of the video game, you can replace the name of the movie, you can even change the grammar a bit, but just express the concept, okay? Express the concept, all right? Um, for entertainment, I love to uh, browse Uh, YouTube for the latest uh, music videos um, as well as some educational content. Just the other day, I learned uh, how 
to make an origami uh, panda bear. All right. Uh, so for entertainment, I love to browse YouTube for the latest music videos as well as some educational content. Just the other day, I learned how to make an origami panda bear. Right? So be original. Okay. All right. It's actually not true. I just made that up, but it's original. Okay. All right. Um, so what you want to always focus on students is focus on answering immediately as soon as you answer think about why so give a reason okay make sure the reason is original and then of course the next step is an example without saying for example or for instance just smooth flowing and again make sure it's original okay that's what you're concentrating on Okay, so now the examiner says, great, uh, let's talk, they won't actually, I'll be honest with you, examiners won't say words like great or good or hmm, they're not supposed to, they're not, they're supposed to be very neutral, they're not supposed to make you feel like, ooh, I'm getting a band nine, or oh no, I'm getting a band four, um, you're supposed to feel like, I don't know what I'm getting, um, they're supposed to be very, very neutral, okay, all right. Uh, so, uh, here's a very uh, popular topic, of course, in today's world. Let's talk about the internet. How often do you use the internet? Okay, this how often question is quite popular. You see these all the time. Okay, Marasa says, well, I use the internet frequently, at least 10 times a day for different activities, like last night, and I searched materials to practice for today's exam from the internet, and this morning, I found the directions for the exam center. Uh, very good, Morasa. That is original content, right? So I frequently use the internet at least 10 times a day. Nice quantitative language, Marasa, uh, for different activities. I love, Marasa, how you avoided saying for different things. You said for different activities. Good. Uh, like last night, I searched it to practice materials for today's exam. And this morning, I used Google Maps to find the best way to get here. Uh, yeah, very good, Marasa. That's how you get the high band scores. Say that fluently and you'll do great, okay? Uh, Maksud says, I frequently use the internet on a daily basis. I would say six to seven hours a day if it's either for my IELTS studies or for entertainment, such as watching movies and playing online games. I'm constantly uh, hooked up to the World Wide Web. Good, Maksud, that's a fantastic answer. I see that you kept going. Just yesterday, I watched an extremely useful English lesson uh, of Adrian's. Thanks, Maksud. <laughs> I'm glad I was there. Thanks for the plug. I appreciate you. Okay. Abhay says, well, usually I'm doing my most of my work using the internet. I'm an interior designer, so I'm uh, downloading some big files from the internet on a daily basis. Furthermore, I use the internet for attending lectures. Um, Abhay, careful. Your answer seems okay, but it's a little bit off. Okay. Um, the answer that you're giving up, hey, it seems to answer the question, why do you use the internet? Uh, this question is, how often do you use the internet? So you want to be really careful, students, to answer the question exactly. So don't accidentally answer, why do you use the internet? Uh, that's a different question. Okay, so... You really want to focus on your quality communication here as well, okay? All right, um, so how often do you use the internet? I'm usually online at least four to five hours each day, whether for work or for entertainment I'm constantly 
browsing the internet. As I had just said, I like to listen to music through YouTube and I'm also a web designer so I'm online to make money at Monday through Friday okay I was building a new website just yesterday for about 10 hours all right so lots of quantitative language quantitative language quantitative language quantitative language quantitative language means numbers okay four to five hours each day about 10 hours yesterday um, Monday to Friday we love to be able to count uh, so that we know specifically what our um, uh, listeners are going to think or what what is being presented to us so uh, we want quantitative language and not just in part one okay oftentimes um, when I teach students about the importance of quantitative language then in part one they remember especially for the first couple questions especially when they get this how often question and then they kind of forget and by part three there's a lack of quantitative language uh, don't do that okay so I've noticed this trend for many students so here's a really important tip okay uh, keep remembering to use quantitative language throughout the interview do not forget it after the first few questions okay um, quantitative language really accelerates um, clarity and bumps up your band scores okay all right here we go so repeat after me how often do you use the internet I'm usually online at least four to five hours each day, whether for work or for entertainment. I'm constantly browsing the internet. As I just said, I like to listen to music through YouTube, and I'm also a web designer, so I'm online to make money Monday through Friday. I was building a new website just yesterday for about 10 hours. All right, so quantitative language, numbers. Numbers create clarity, okay? All right. Okay, uh, let's keep rolling. Next question. What are some of the sites you visit frequently? Makes sense, okay. So what are some of the sites you visit frequently? Abhay said, as I mentioned, I'm an interior designer. Uh, usually I visit uh, architectural and structural sites. Uh, I'm also a movie addict, so I frequently search Netflix uh, and other movie sites like Amazon Prime when I want to have some fun and relax. Yeah, good. Up, hey, keep being specific. So if there's a specific website for architecture, then name it. Okay. Marasa says, interesting question. Hmm. Quite often I use social websites like Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, and Google. As I've mentioned in my previous answer, so I can collect materials to practice for exam for my exams, like today's IELTS exam. Okay, Marasa, good. Uh, Marasa, interesting question. I don't know. Um, I don't think this is such an interesting question personally. I think it's a bit awkward to say it for this one. Interesting question will usually come into your speech in part three. In part three, there'll be asking some more interesting questions. Part one, eh, maybe not so much, maybe just a couple, uh, couple questions in the end, okay? So careful with that. 
Pandya Viren says, I frequently use sites like YouTube because I get a lot of uh, different information. I like to study there. I get great content for free as well. And I watch some funny content to relax. Uh, Pandya, don't use the word stuff. Okay. Has no value. It's a weak word. Uh, Rajveer says, I usually browse educational e-commerce and entertainment websites to enhance my knowledge and to have fun, like yesterday, I visited uh, Stack Overflow to get a solution for a programming bug. Very good, Rajveer. I like it. I like how you went specific on that. Okay. Makes you sound original, fluent. All right. Aman Burke says, yeah, definitely. As I'm a student, I frequently search sites that have study materials as well as uh, for research purposes. Along with this, I browse some sites for the sake of entertainment. Aman, good start. You gave a reason, which is great. Give me a specific example, okay? So uh, as I'm a student, I frequently search sites having study materials um, like uh, Cambridge Dictionary, Cambridge English, Okay, so name the websites. Uh, Luffy Rogers says, I usually spend a lot of time surfing websites such as YouTube and Netflix. Those are extremely helpful for me to unwind after a long day. Luffy, good. Don't um, repeat yourself. So unwind from stress and relax. It's really repetitive. Just unwind. Unwind means release stress and relax. Okay. All right. Janiel says, well, these days I'm learning English for IELTS, so I usually visit the AE Help website 10 to 12 times for four to five hours. It's really improved my English communication and writing skills. Janiel, that's fantastic. I'm glad that you use our websites. Thanks for the plug. Um, yeah, lots of content there for sure, so it's good. Vishal says, as I'm a programmer, I use Stack Overflow to solve errors, and also I use Netflix and Amazon to watch movies uh, and relax. Uh, yeah, good. Okay, I'll have to check out Stack Overflow. I do a little bit of programming here and there, and maybe I'll check that out. All right. So aside from YouTube, I also visit a lot of social media websites like uh, Facebook and Instagram to keep up with uh, what my friends are doing. Early this morning, I was browsing my English speaking friends uh, profiles to discover their most recent adventures while also casually preparing for this exam. Okay, all right, in this way. I can hit two birds with one stone. So uh, here we go. And this is the kind of idiomatic phrase that I want you to be really careful about. But I'm going to teach you one here with this. Um, so repeat after me. What are some of the sites you visit frequently? Aside from YouTube, I also visit a lot of social media websites like Facebook and Instagram to keep up with what my friends are doing. Early this morning, I was browsing my English-speaking friends' profiles to discover their most recent adventures while also casually preparing for this exam. In this way, I can hit two birds with one stone. Multitasking? Eh, maybe. Um, okay, so hit two birds with one stone means that you're uh, doing two beneficial activities uh, simultaneously. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next one. Do you use the internet at school or at work? Again, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. 
Do you use the internet at school or at work? Un says, I'm currently uh, a student only, but I do use the internet at school at least twice a day since my school has over 100 computers for students to search for information and learn computer sciences. Un, very good. Uh, no need to use the word but. Okay, so I'm currently uh, a student, so I don't use the internet for work, but I do use the internet at school. Okay, you have to name that you're not using it at work. Okay, all right. Shahil says, I mostly use the internet in my office when I don't have much of a workload. I use the internet at home after coming back from the office to go through social media. Uh, Shahil, uh, this is not asking about do you use it at home and social media. This is asking about school and work only. Stay on topic. It's really important. Okay. All right. Hassan says, I usually use the internet for work. As I said before, I tend to read three articles from HBR and The Economist Daily. I think the internet is a good source of uh, edutainment. <laughs> Very good, Hassan. Education and entertainment together. Edutainment. Yeah, it's a pop culture word these days. Careful with those, Hassan. You used it well, but just be really careful. All right, Sammy says, yes, of course. As I said earlier, I work... Uh, in a bank, I always need the internet for finishing my tasks. Otherwise, it's so difficult for me to work without it. Also, I use Google uh, to search for relevant information. Very good, Sammy. Okay. Uh, Piyush says, yes, I do use the internet at college for projects um, or uh, for other educational purposes. And honestly, I also browse the internet for entertainment during my free time while I'm at school, right? I'm guessing. So you have to finish that idea, Piyush, while I'm at school, okay? Otherwise, it sounds like you're going off topic, okay? Make sure it's always connected. Rajveer says, I use the World Wide Web at work as I've already uh, completed my master's. I mostly use the internet to connect with a VPN in my office to carry out my work assignments internationally. Okay, I'm guessing, Rajveer, that you're using a VPN because you have difficulty accessing some materials from different parts of the world. So you need to um, make that clear. Remember, Rajveer, the examiner is like your grandpa or your grandma. They might not know what VPN um, stands for. So they might not know that it's a proxy network, okay, and why you might need something like that, all right? So you have to really clearly express yourself. Okay, so I both use the web at the office as well as at my uh, school while I'm uh, sitting at my desk. I'm logged into my email constantly so that clients can communicate with me at any time and when I'm at my university campus I'm always hooked up to the Wi-Fi uh, for a variety of study purposes like doing research for my master's thesis on um, alternative uh, cryptocurrencies. Okay, so again, Sounding original, being fluent, why not? Uh, give uh, some good connectives, give some good correlative conjunctions, both and, okay, both as well as in this case. Uh, complex sentences with while, subordinating conjunction, okay, of time. Here we go. Repeat after me. Do you use the internet at school 
or at work. I both use the web at the office as well as at my school. While I'm sitting at my desk, I'm logged into my email constantly so that clients can communicate with me at any time. And when I'm at university, um, I'm always hooked up to the Wi-Fi for a variety of study purposes like doing research for my master's thesis on alternative uh, crypto uh, currencies. Okay, so here we go. Next question. Is internet access commonly available in your country? Again, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Is internet access commonly available in your country? Oh, it says yes. The internet spreads across the country these days, unlike uh, several years back. It was really restricted and quite expensive. Ois, what country are you in? Name the country. Always name your country. Okay. Moria says, yes, there is internet availability even to remote parts of the country with over 600 million users. Yesterday, I overheard my maid talking about placing an order on Amazon. Moria, good. Again, name the country. Always name the country. Be specific. Malika says, because of political issues in my country, we can access the internet mostly through VPN to see various websites, such as university websites. I'm an applicant, and I have uh, problems with that. Malika, are you in China or North Korea? Where are you? Okay, so name the country. Maksud says, yes, certainly. In Uzbekistan, the internet is freely accessible anywhere these days, even in rural areas. Millions of individuals use the internet in Uzbekistan, whether for work, entertainment, and studies, just about anywhere. Yeah, okay. So, good. All right. Um, interestingly, the internet is widely available in most urban areas of Canada and some rural parts as well. However, there are definitely a lot of remote places in Canada where there is no internet or mobile phone signal unless a person is using a very expensive satellite uh, connection. This is, of course, because Canada is a massive country and there are simply not enough people living there to make the internet financially uh, feasible in across the entire nation. I thought I'd give you kind of an interesting answer here about Canada. Um, feasible. A uh, better word here is viable. Okay. Um, yeah, so some people would probably think, oh, in Canada you can get the internet anywhere. Uh, but it's actually not true. Um, if you are in... A lot of places in Canada that are very remote, where there are very few people living, if it's not an established town, uh, you might not get a, a phone signal or uh, internet connection. So um, here we go. Uh, is internet access commonly available in your country? Interestingly, the internet is widely available in most urban areas of Canada and some rural parts. I should probably say all urban areas, but you never know. 
Um, however, there are definitely a lot of remote places in Canada where there is no internet or mobile phone signal unless a person is using a very expensive satellite connection. This is, of course, because Canada is a massive country and there are simply not enough people living there to make the internet financially viable across the entire nation. Okay, so you can go on hikes and long road trips in Canada where you look at your phone and suddenly you see that there's no internet and there's no bars. All right, it's just a big country and 30 million people. Well, you wouldn't build a cell phone tower to service two people, right? <laughs> um, that would be very expensive. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, so I'll end on that note today. Um, an interesting kind of situation. Uh, here are some more questions that you can try on your own. Why do you think people use the internet? How has the way you use the internet changed today compared to five years ago? If you could make a website, what would it be? Try these questions on your own. Uh, record them on your phone. Listen back to them. Improve them. When you think you have a great answer, send that MP3 to my email. Again, my email is adrian at aehelp.com, and I'll give you an estimate uh, of your score. Don't write your answer. Just record it on your phone. Make sure it's in MP3 format, and then send it to me. Uh, tomorrow, I will host a couple more classes a little bit earlier in the day. Uh, task to start for members. Everybody is welcome to watch. And then listening part one and two practice uh, for lots more materials and HD videos that are pre-recorded for all sections of the IELTS, for academic IELTS, aehelp.com, for general gieltshelp.com, it's worth investing a few dollars on those websites and really getting some great training materials. I hope you've all had fun. You're very welcome. I see all the thank yous. Um, and uh, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Much love to all of you. I'm Adrian signing out for now from Budapest. Goodbye.